are live! Uh, but we're also on tape. We are deep down in the bowels uh, of Lee's music. It's episode 76 of Kamloops last week. Chris Folds, No Greg the Engineer, Magic Mike, and Bill at the controls. 76. 76, 76. Oh, 76, that's when Jimmy Carter was elected. Uh, president, uh, one four-year term. Um, he was ousted by Reagan, but looking back, he was one of the most compassionate presidents ever. Still works for Habitat for Humanity. Who's, uh, your, who's the best president of all time? The best American president? Oh, it's hard to say. I'd say, uh, if, uh, just based on my limited knowledge, I would say uh, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who led, the, led America through the, uh, through the New Deal, through the, the Depression and the war, and, and probably Lincoln. Probably Lincoln, and I think the most consequential, one of the most consequential presidents, which could be good or bad, but who changed the world for good or worse, I think one of the most consequential presidents uh, is Lyndon Johnson with the civil rights uh, work he, he carried on from Kennedy, but Ronald Reagan, because Ronald Reagan, whether you love him or hate him, he, him and Thatcher and, and, and the whole trickle-down economy stuff, they change a lot of stuff from the 80s to now. A lot of people say the problems we have today with the disparity, the middle class uh, getting squeezed out um, is, 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 a, is a direct result of Ronald Reagan. Uh, less government, let the free enterprise go, less checks on a regulation. So he'd be the most consequential president in our time, I think. Magic Mike, how are you doing today? Oh, is this new uh, audio backing for the Magic Mirror? Yeah, so today in 1976, the number one song was Wings. Silly little love song. Horrible song. Horrible yeah, song. Pretty bad. This <laughs> this this song alone could have wiped out uh, McCartney's legacy with the Beatles. What a horrible so, song. So I was like, what is this top song of '76? Mm. So I googled it, and I was like, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. That's just one week in '76. It might have been a no, better song next week. Okay, but on the sixth week, hopefully, is a better song. And yeah, so I looked at it. The top ten songs. My favorite. One of my favorite all-time songs is uh, uh, Wild Cherry. Uh, play that funky music. Play that funky mm. music, White yeah. Boy. That's right. 1976. It was also my birth year. So that was actually the second uh, 45 I ever bought was Wild Cherry. Play that funky music. The first was Carl Douglas Kung Fu Fighting. Well. But <laughs> when I was in school, and this is elementary school, we all loved that song. It was played on CKLG and C Fun with the raccoon. But we loved that song because of the kids, we thought he was saying, play that effing music. Yeah. <laughs> so we listened to it thinking, don't let our parents hear. Not until was later, it was that funky music. Was there a tape or a CD? It would have been probably a tape that was like the first time you remember being like, I love music. The first tape that I actually went out and bought uh, was Wham! Make It Big. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. That George uh, Michael. George Michael. Yeah, and what's, what was his, uh, Andrew, what? Jitterbug. Yeah. Yeah. You put the boom, boom into my heart. Yeah, well, I could good. only, I was only allowed to listen to Christian music for right. most of my upbringing. And then I, I got a tape of Elvis. Oh. Elvis actually changed my whole musical yeah, life. As he should. He's the greatest. Uh, the and, then, and then I got a Jimi Hendrix tape. Uh, and that was also massive. And then, tragically, hip. The first time I heard a trouble at the hen house. Yes, because that was great. I was grade six at that time. Yes. My, well, my dad was uh, one of the ultimate Beatles fans, so I had uh, all of his record collection to play with as I was growing up. And one day, he came home from the music store after working a long day, and to find me playing with his uh, pristine Magical Mystery Tour magazine or. Uh, record with all the goggles yeah, and yeah, stuff that yeah, came. I yeah. opened them all up and I was wearing them. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so mad. So Dressing up early on, probably had a furry costume on back then. Mike, yeah. Mike would be the guy who would break the zipper on the sticky fingers out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we haven't even intro the show yet. We do have a really good show today. Uh, Rhonda Nixon on the show. The superintendent of the uh, Kamloops Thompson School District will be here to talk about the provincial, the new provincial uh, anti-racism action plan, but also um, the policy the local district has, has had in place for about two years now. Mm -hmm. We also have Mike's new favorite guest of all time on the show, Kibbles, a little dog. I'm so excited for Kibbles. Uh, <laughs> Kibbles with no bits, because uh, he's recently been fixed. But uh, beautiful dog, beautiful story. Just no panting today, Mike. I know how you like to pant in certain situations and it gets you in trouble, so just take yeah. it easy. Uh, that's because Jim and Susanna are here from Angels Animal Rescue in Merritt. They're involved with the Kamloops Storm, a fundraiser, a wiener dog race on February 4th. So we wanted to give them some love. Meet Kibbles, uh, an excited Kibbles in a little bit. Also, we have some things to give away. <laughs> we have 
<laughs> uh, Tom Lavin and the legendary Powder Blues. I didn't give this away last week, so we're going to package deal this thing with... So this is February 11th at the Sagebrush Theater. It's a great band. Mike, you've talked about this yep. band. I Legendary think, band, yep. Yeah, I think he's even getting some music prepared for Worth, us right now. Worthwhile to watch, for sure. And uh, we're going to package that up with four Scotty's Tournament of Hearts tickets for Draw One at the Sandman Center, Friday, February 17th, two pairs. So like and comment and tag a friend on this Instagram post to enter for a chance to win this fantastic package from Kamloops last week. That's a good one. There it is. This is the Powder Blues? That's Powder Blues. Probably their most famous song, I think. Okay. Right. <laughs> now, us three, again, this last weekend. Huge weekend for us. You know, it, these epic adventures that we go on is, uh, is, is really uh, part of the, the, the fun. Um, and we really wanted to uh, go bird watching because uh, you know like a couple weeks ago we saw all those eagles and we right. thought the story about the the owl and we thought that it'd be great to see if we can find uh, some spotted woodpeckers right so of course where spotted woodpeckers uh, congregate and hang out is oh yeah yeah right right uh, right behind uh, Lee's music here because you got that little grove of trees there where you keep some of your stuff but they actually migrated down to Mission Flats because there was this sweet smell of a oh, distillery, right. a yes. vodka distillery. Right. Yes. They are attracted. Mango well, because they, they like, yeah, they like that sweet, uh, the sweet uh, and the aroma from the uh, distillery. From Club Car. Mm. And I think that's maybe this summer, a new distillery going in, Mike. And they're involved in music too, aren't they? I, I got to say, you know, Club Car is a really cool company because they like to support emerging artists. So uh, 25 cents from every can goes to uh, helping emerging artists and uh, in, in Western Canada, in our area. So you can have a great drink and support music at the same time. There was a problem though, because we found some woodpeckers, because you love woodpeckers, and you, you've always loved woodpeckers. And in Mission Flats, they had found these old mattresses. They were Sealy mattresses, and they were puncturing and those, all this stuff coming out of the mattresses. So what did we have to do? Uh. <laughs> Yeah, Chris, what do we have to do? <laughs> what do we have to do with this, this mess everywhere? Well, there's a huge mess, so we had to call. Well, we actually had to go and regroup at McDonald's because we weren't sure <laughs> who to what call. to do yet. What to do. So we all never around. Dangerous. <laughs> this is not exactly. something that you take lightly, right? No, no. You sit around and you have a $1 coffee and I think about it. I have a $2 it. latte. 105 attacks. Yeah. yeah. And, and once... And we called Vinny. Because although Vinny's king of uh, commercial... Uh, heating and, and cold control and, uh, mechanical cold <clears throat> control mechanical he's king of that yeah of heating we thought he's a problem solver and yeah. he's honest well, they have and lots of shop vacs high. Yeah. They hit high integrity they have shop vacs the shop vacs too. is what we needed before the stuff went into the river so and you started making the, all these weird bets mm -hmm. bet stamp bet stamp that's right what is it it's the Trivago of, uh, of betting so if you go if you want to get a hotel room and you don't want to go to 500 sites to find the best uh, hotel room you go to Trivago or one of those sites hotels.com and they kind of do all the work for you and get you the best rate bet stamp does the same thing for betting lines and you can pick the best odds uh, for your for your bet they call that line shopping the best place to do it it's an app you have to download called bet stamp use the promo code Kamloops last week there was a prop, you know, can Vinny sweep this stuff up before it gets into the river? And I, and I looked at all the odds, and the best one I got was from 888, and uh, it was uh, 1.41 odds. Yeah. Incredible. Dustin you, was there, too. What, what was really fun, though, was how we were each trying to make a, uh, 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 you know, like Woody Woodpecker sound. And what was yours like, uh, Marty? No, I actually, I had a coffee at that time, and I choked when I tried to do mine, so I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Oh, so $1 you're not going to try again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. I think we got to move on here. Um, that's yeah, probably the, that, that's probably the worst epic journey we've been on. That was a tough journey. Yeah, that was a horrible journey. A tough journey we went yeah, on. We there. saved the river. So yeah. yes, we saved the river, which is the most important part. Yeah. Let's see if we can save this show in Above the Folds. Brought to you by Gord's Appliance and Mattress Center. Don't want the nine-hour cycle, please. Freaking five hundred-dollar hydro bill, piece of trash. I need to speak to Gord on the Niner. Hey, no, I'm actually Steve, the new owner. First things first, pal, you should probably update your sign. Number two, my dishwasher is mangled, tangled again, the nine hour cycle, hydro bill through the roof. You guys don't fix appliances, I know that, so I need a new one. We actually do fix appliances, but if you want, I can try some new ones first and have a look. You got a price in mind? 
Money is not an obstacle for me. <laughs> Money is definitely an obstacle. He's the cheapest guy in Kamloops. Ain't that right, Darby? <laughs> well, this here is going to be your Cadillac model, top of the line. This is our middle of the road dishwasher. Just a great dishwasher at a great price. This is our budget friendly model. Still a great dishwasher. Just at a bit of a lower price. Price doesn't work for me. Let's see if we can fix mine at home. Alrighty then. There you go. Seems to be good. How's the fridge working? The fridge is fine, Gord. It's Steve. Rhonda Nixon, the superintendent of Kamloops Thompson School District, SD73, and uh, she's here to talk about uh, a few things, one of which is the, uh, the provincial government. Uh, Education Minister Singh was in, in Kamloops a couple days ago to uh, announce the launch of a provincial anti-racism action plan. SD73, two years ago, March 21, uh, implemented its own uh, anti-racism and human rights plan and maybe you can expand on that and how that came to be and how that differs or how that meshes with the provincial goal here. Absolutely. So first of all, I need to say we have an incredible inclusive education team. I have an assistant superintendent of inclusive education, uh, Vessi Mochikas, who is well known. So she had uh, been leading the charge with that. What occurred was there was an incident, as happens in many school districts, regarding um, racism. And we have incidents in schools and they actually use that to say to students, let's develop a group. And let's actually consult on what a policy would look like. And this connects to what the province is doing as well, because they would like to have systemic ways of identifying acts, human rights transgressions, really, yeah. right? So acts of racism, bullying, uh, homophobia, transphobia, and that student group was very mobilized. So it wasn't just that they developed a policy, they developed impetus as a group. Mm -hmm. So at the time, a number of student groups emerged from that. And what you saw is um, the culmination of all of those kids coming together in what's called a student equity council on Monday. But that work that they've been doing has been happening really over the course of, I would say, a few years yep. through the district student advisory council, SOGI leads in schools, uh, where we have Aboriginal student leadership council, where we have secondary students who voluntarily come together, work with Vessi and Vessi's team to be able to say, what is it that we're seeing happening in schools? How is this policy going? Um, how have the responses been? Is it getting better? And so that's the work we've been doing for some time. And so the ministry's interested, how do we do this provincially? Right. And I don't want to say we're the only district doing this work because that would be disingenuous. We are a strong district doing this work because of the work of our inclusive education team. On that question, is it getting better? You, this is your second full year as a superintendent right. of, uh, of Kamloops. You come from Alberta, yeah. St. Albert, home of the fabled saints who moves <laughs> elsewhere, and I still call them St. Albert Saints, even though they're spruce school over or down the road there. Um, is it getting better, your you, second full year as superintendent? And by that I mean, are you seeing fewer incidences or also are you seeing better education and people responding to this and learning that, geez, I can't say that, or I should have done that, or I, I need to be a better person? That's really a, an excellent question. I think that's uh, measuring whether or not things get better is complex. So I will say what we are seeing and we expected to see it is more reports of acts of racism or what would be called harassment or right. bullying for various um, human rights reasons. And that's a good thing. So we have a critical instant response, of course, when things are out of hand. That is not something that's increasing. What's increasing is that students are very capable of saying that is not right. right. This is an example of racism. I trust an adult, I'm going to tell that adult. They also have student champions in their schools. So what I'd say I've noticed, and I don't want to take any credit for things improving or not improving at this stage, I will say things are improving in terms of students being able to articulate, parents being able to articulate, and staff, that there is something we need to address and let's get together and address it. I would also say things are not escalating in the seriousness of the incidents because they're being handled more preventative and more quickly, responsibly, as opposed to reactively, and after something's gone really wrong. Not that we don't have incidents like that, but there's fewer of those incidents because they're handled quicker. And the proactive part is also, it, it could be including the teaching, the teaching, adding, adding the teaching, Absolutely. adding the resources, all that. And I guess having the kids involved 
is something when I went to school, it was always top down. It was like you listen to us, we're going <coughs> to tell you what to do. SD73 did it with the school with the uh, with the school, school dress code. Um, there was that incident we wrote about, but then you you got a kids involved in it too. Yep. They say, well, you you guys are wearing the clothes. Let's talk about it. In this case, they're the ones where the problems are probably going to be mostly. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably one something that's made it stronger. I would think. Yes, and I and I want to capitalize on something else you said. Capacity building is a big part of what we do in SD seventy three, and you would read that also in the provincial plan. So capacity building has happened through a number of different professional learning avenues. We have what's called. Um, uh, Aboriginal lead sessions where we have our district principal of Aboriginal education lead the charge with Indigenous specific racism and also understanding residential schools and how that plays into this work. All of our teams come together from our schools, so principal, vice principal, um, some lead teachers. And what I notice about those sessions is that they integrate all of these aspects into them. So the professional learning um, is deep it's ongoing. So in the time I've been here, these leaders meet every four to six weeks. We also have school leaders meetings where this is actually taken up and continued. So how is it going? What are we doing? And learning from speakers right. who are well known like Joe Crona recently. So we have had really strong professional learning to be able to respond to what students are saying and doing, but also learning from experts in the area that are outside of our district as well as inside. And that's a commitment we're making. And by no stretch do I think we have all the measures or if you said to me, do I have perfect measures to know if racism is improving or not? No, mm -hmm. that's why Monday we got together to say, how are we going to define racism? What does it mean to actually measure change? Right. And we're at the beginning stages of that work. If I can go on to um, when the minister was here, there's questions asked about uh, much anticipated, much discussed new funding for new schools in, t in, in, in Kamloops. Yeah. I know I think uh, one of the stats was every year the equivalent of a, of, of a, a mid-sized elementary school population is moving to Kamloops. And uh, we're seeing the reverse of what 10 years ago when schools are closed or being reopened. So we have um, Pineview, Brocklehurst, or Bachelor Heights, mm -hmm. and Aberdeen are three sites that have been identified as, uh, what are the priorities in, op in, 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 in a perfect world, if you had the funding, which would open first, second, and third of those three? Or are there other places in town? So I'll just speak about what our most pressing needs are using the Board of Education's brief with the Minister. Mm -hmm. The most pressing need right now is certainly Pine View Valley. Right. Uh, what makes that area unique is that prior to uh, me arriving and then taking over, um, there were 13 catchment changes affecting 25% of our schools, elementary schools in Southwest Kamloops. And what that meant was our schools are getting too full. Mm -hmm. And so we were forced to relocate kids to distribute them. And it's never a preferred option. What's different, this situation is different now, is that McGowan Park Elementary is at 160% utilization capacity. And we really would be pressured to put even one more portable next right. to that school. But here's the catch. I have nowhere to move the kids right now because I have no schools that have room in the nearby vicinity. So it is really pressuring us to, to say, we've reached a point now, Minister, and she heard us, I believe, and the, the board did a good job saying, we've sent you letters, we've advocated, but we, we actually really need this to happen now. Yeah. And she responded in kind to say, I've heard, I've heard you, and yes, I understand it's dire. Well, we're going to know uh, February 28th because that's when the budget uh, document comes out. And if it's on there, it's on there. If it's not, then we got to wait again. She is a new, relatively new minister, yes. so she maybe has to get her feet wet. With the Albert McGowan, you can go, you know, there's this whole outdoor uh, school craze. You got this huge track of land that Guy Mercy owns it behind it. Just send the kids out there. <laughs> when I was a kid, we didn't have all these fancy, fancy classes. We went and we just have them in the field learning, right? I, I did have one question on the first topic. I mean, what, what do you hope um, the new plan? does for the day-to-day -day lives of the students. Yeah. So what I hope the new plan does is that we are able to learn from the lived experiences that were um, discussed that day. So the first step is that we had 100 and, 150 plus students in a room on Monday. And what we asked them to do, and it was wonderful, is tell us what your experiences of racism are. What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? The students were incredibly articulate. I think we need to have all students and staff understand those experiences and from that have a shared definition of what it means to experience racism. And from there, the students have been asked to go back from this, this day and say, what is your wish? 
I would like to see that wish articulated across all of our schools and understand how we're going to act on one step at a time. Because so I think it's really easy to talk about um, these things theoretically, but this is no longer theoretical. It is students sharing their lived experiences, which by the way, that day was, was really moving and, and challenging. So I think that we need to take that work and move forward with, with it through an action plan from their work. I was going to ask you about an anecdote. Can you share an anecdote that maybe was poignant from the, the shared experiences, if that's okay? Yes, I can. Um, so I was, there were two tables designated where the students were free to talk to media and um, be on film. So I sat with one of those groups and I asked um, the students, can you tell me what it is like to experience racism in the school? And one um, individual who spoke up said, and she actually is a spokesperson, Anisha Thomas, for that day, she said, here's the issue. You end up hearing something, a remark about your skin color, but you hear it so often that you just sort of assume this is the way it needs to be and there's nothing I can do about it. These are her words. And I said, what can we do to change that? She said, what we can do is help students not be afraid to speak up. It's become normalized and because it's become normalized, it's part of the culture and accepted. And she said, we need that to change in our student body. And her other um, suggestion to me was, I said, what can I do as a superintendent? She said, I think you need an action item from these students that can be um, taken up by adults through professional learning. And she articulated that at the board meeting also that evening. Um, they spoke together, um, the two student advocates spoke from that group to the board and shared the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just share our experiences and then look at the action items that have come from it and then let the adults and the students work together. And she said it can't rely on just the people who have been hurt. Because if that happens, it's too hard and you could see the students, what was really hard that day is as they were talking, they were starting to tear up because yeah. they're bringing up memories. And I realized that just making them talk about these things is re-traumatizing. So we have to walk a fine line there yeah. and listen to how much is enough we've shared now, take some actions from what we've asked you to do and do something with it as adults. So that's our commitment to them to do that. Mike, you have anything to add? You know, I, I, I have to applaud you guys for, for doing that. I, I think it's really, really great. I wish I had more of that in, in high school um, and that kind of a thing. So no, I don't have anything to, to add other than uh, I'd love to somehow be a part of the solution. So uh, good job. Okay. Thanks. Well, we appreciate you. Short notice coming on. Very short us. notice. Last <laughs> night. It was, yeah, I was, I was curling night. and I was texting. <laughs> I was emailing you and texting you and, and, uh, and Rhonda. And Mike came in early in. to make this happen. And it was Bill, very good. So thanks very, very good. much. Yep. We're going to move you. on now to the Tattle of Hastings. It's brought to you by McDonald's. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> oh. That is little kibbles right down there with Jim and Susanna. Hello, Kibbles. They are from Angels Animal Rescue. And uh, the Kamloops Storm are having a wiener dog race on February 4th. And the proceeds, or some of the proceeds, are going toward Angels Animal Rescue. And we wanted to have you guys on just to talk about what it is. So what is Angels Animal Rescue? Well, Angels Animal Rescue is located in Merritt, BC, on 11 acres, and it was a grassroots movement that began in 2008. Uh, the uh, accident scene, bad accident scene, where two people perished and one was unconscious, and the d we didn't know until the rescue began that there was a dog also. It crawled out on, onto the road from a ditch and lay across the chest of the deceased person. So the fundraising began to, uh, s to save Angel, the dog, and his leg was also amputated, and he made a full recovery and rejoined his, his family. Mm -hmm. so, so the donations came in for that, and the fundraising began on that day, and Angel's uh, started, basically, and... Um, we're all volunteers, and over the years, 1,233 dogs and other animals have, I'm sorry, 10,000. Wow. I'm sorry, <laughs> 11,000. 11, See, he should do the talking. <laughs> 11,123 animals have passed through angels, and uh, mostly dogs, and they're all spayed, neutered, vaccinated, and have a tattoo, and uh, before they're put up for adoption when they're ready. 
and some just stay at Angels if they're happy there. They all have, we have um, kennels that are a quarter acre in size. They're all, it's all fenced and uh, good, 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 <laughs> good little boy. It's all fenced and we have um, big heated kennels with open doggy doors so they can come and go as they please and they have uh, buddies in the pens that are matched with them so they can uh, play and volunteers take them for a walk so they're rehabilitated and um, socialized mm -hmm. before they're put up for adoption and um, we've had people from all over North America adopt these dogs and it's all word of mouth. Where do they come from? How do you, how do you, how do the dogs get there? How do you know about them? Who, like, uh, give us a background on, on uh, for Kibbles, for example, here, or, or all the dogs. How do they get to angels? Uh, well, they're, um, like I said, it's mostly word of mouth. Yeah. So this is a society that's very much needed in the Nicola Valley and elsewhere. We've gone all over. The province actually mm -hmm. um, for dogs, um, so it's it's known, and um, so they call. So yeah. people call and say, "Hey, I, 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 I yeah. there's there's a there's an abandoned dog, or there's yes, a, there's a get... dog on a property that, that we think is being neglected, or correct? Yes. You work with the SBCA at all to like rescue yes. them? Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, how are you involved? <coughs> Sorry, how are you involved? What's your role? Uh, I'm a full-time volunteer there. I've been there for about yeah. three years Can now. And I socialize them, uh, <laughs> practically anything to do with them. Yeah. I, I do. Um, you know, the, the, the Angels is open 24 hours a day, so someone's got to be there. And uh, yeah, and that's what I do. I why just, do you, why did you get involved and why do you love animals? I've always loved animals. My mother used to rescue animals, um, so it's, started my life rescuing animals and I'm going to finish it rescuing animals. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's very rewarding. It's very heartbreaking at times. Um, it's hard work, but the benefits, when you see a dog come in who wants to bite everybody, who hasn't been socialized at all, and then you see him go out maybe a couple of months, maybe a year, um, happy, Contented, going to a beautiful, loving home. That is, that is all the reward. Yeah. Well, let, let's we, take Kibbles for example, because I do have some background. I think um, it just wasn't a great situation where Kibbles was. Um, couldn't afford the vet care, so ends up at Angels, and the amputation had had to be done. And this is yes. recent, right? This yes. amputation. Yes. Yes. So how's Kibbles doing? Kibbles is doing fantastic. Um, he, he obviously misses his leg, but he copes uh, amazingly. Um, it's very inspiring. Yes, yeah. Kibbles is unbelievable. He was well jumping up like, uh, like a pogo stick here. It was, it was great. Like yeah. He, yeah. he seems like he's, he's adapted to this. Oh, he has. Um, so fast. Yeah. Okay. When, I, when he first came out, I didn't know he was missing a leg. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Animals do that, and, yeah. and it's... Um, Mike, <laughs> it is very inspiring. You're, something's going on back there. I, I love dogs. That's all. <laughs> oh well, well you or your dog, Zobo. I mean, does this bring back memories of, of Zobo? Uh, yeah. You know what? Uh, this dog is 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 got from the first time I met him out in the parking lot. He's got that demeanor. He's just full of life, and I can't believe eleven thousand animals. First of all, more also, than that. Actually. More than that. I can't also believe that it's just been just over a week since his amputation yeah. and his dog is, is thriving it's 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 fantastic yes it is yes. So. i had a friend so i posted kibble's picture on instagram last night and within five minutes my friend Haley said how do we adopt <laughs> kibbles so this is gonna happen well is is kibbles up for adoption and not at the moment he's, no. got, he's still got a, a ways to go to recover um but eventually he will be up for adoption yes and the the <laughs> Best way to apply for uh, any adoptions is to get in touch with Judana, who is the founder operator of Angels. Yes, um, and she does all the adoptions. Um, we have to make sure she, they they're going to go to a, um, a fence yard, a home where either there is another uh, dog that they can socialise with. Um, 
it's laid but off. yes, if, if you get in touch with Judanna, um, she'd be more than happy to uh, to guide you in the right direction on what forms and everything. Is there a there. website? Uh, well, we're trying to build a web right. website, and we're looking for someone who knows okay. how to do it. Because um, is there a phone, phone number they can call? Two five zero three seven eight five two two three, and you can find Angels Animal Rescue on Facebook as well. Good. Yes. The Kamloops Storm are hosting. Great job at the Kamloops Storm. It's February. Let me get the date right here. Fourth, yeah. in between the first and second periods, wiener dog race. So if you have a wiener dog, yeah. you can call Matt Cole, the GM, to register the wiener dog. 250-319-3738. You get two free tickets if you register your dog. Proceeds. Also, if you have something to donate, because they want to raise cash for, for yes. you and yes. for, for angels yes. and for little kibbles here, you can call Matt as well, donate, whatever you may have, something, GCs, and, and help out the cause yeah. uh, if you want to. Yeah. Yes, Folds, anything to add? We're no, I just think this is funded uh, by donations. Funded by donations. No, it's all, all it's 100 yes. percent donations, right? Yeah, yes. 100 percent donations. That's pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, that's good. No, it's good. Yeah. Susanna, do you have any kind of? So you talked about heartbreaking but rewarding stories. Is there anything that stands out in your mind about a pet that came through that kind of changed your life or or was a you know a big moment for you? Well, yes. Aside from the story I told you about Angel, yeah. which was just pure karma that. Uh, that the dog's name was Angel. But the other dog that really, I think, put us on the map, and me definitely volunteering, you know, was a dog named April Rain, who has been in the media. You might have heard of April Rain, who uh, was beautiful Labrador and was purposely dragged along a gravel road across two cattle guards behind, behind a car. A behind a pickup truck as a method of training. And Judanna was called by surrounding neighbors of this dying dog lying on a porch. And uh, so she waited and waited and nobody came home. So she took the dog to the vet and saved her life. And she was basically our, our mascot or however you want to put it she did get adopted to a beautiful home in North Van and those kind people actually made a large donation and we have our critical care building which is a safe haven for the dogs to recover in yeah. as a result of these generous people and April Rain lived a long uh, healthy life out on the boat and everything and they adopted three dogs since April rain. Nice. So she's the one who probably uh, changed my cool. life. And beautiful dog. That's a great and story. Kibbles is a great story. Sure Kibbles is not going to have a tough time finding a home. <laughs> no, I'd take it home right now. Yeah. <laughs> who, yeah. I, I like Kibbles a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Haley, you, you might have competition little, out there. Little bandana <laughs> with the Kibbles likes the McDonald's too. How old is Kibbles? It's nine months. Only nine months oh, old. Oh, that's yeah. pretty and good. Had a, Oh, well, you can see how resilient she is and how resilient dogs are and how forgiving and loving. And uh, she'll, she'll have a wonderful home. And there are other dogs there waiting, actually, for wonderful homes. Oh, that's a nice oh, view, Kibbles. Yeah. <laughs> little moon action. <laughs> Downward dog. <laughs> Downward dog. Are you a little yoga dog? Yes. Oh, just a good girl. And... Uh, so there are dogs waiting for good homes, and Judanna is wonderful in mixing and matching uh, the potential guardians and uh, the dogs. She's done that, as I said, over 10,000 times yes. successfully. Good. Mm -hmm. And well, if the dog doesn't work out, they can bring, no, you know, no problem bringing the dog back. Good. And, uh, Okay. Well, thank you. You made the trip from Merritt today? Yes. 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 Thank Thanks you very much for doing that, for being kibbles. It was good to talk to you, and good luck. <laughs> good oh, to meet you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, see you. Nice to, nice to meet you. Before we wrap the show, the magic mirror cam, can we see that again? We are looking for a sponsor. Uh, you can see behind me, I put up uh, a screen, made some room, so we can actually put some good logos <laughs> up right behind me there. So. Yeah, we can make your own background. We can, product placement can go in there. The Magic Mirror brought to you by, and Mike's on our show all the time now. He's an integral part of the show, so you're going to be getting a lot of love up there. Uh, you can contact klw at kamloopsthisweek.com if you're interested in that. And we also have an opening now 
in Reader's Digest uh, starting next month. Reader's Digest brought to you by, and it's, it's our most viewed segment at this point. So if you're interested in that, again, KLW at cantaloupsthisweek.com. Thoughts on the show? Good, interesting show. Um, some good stuff from the education. Love to love to meet the dog. The dog was really, really, really cool dog. And um, yeah, it was nice. It was a nice to see uh, to give them some publicity because Angels uh, does some really, really, uh, really good work. Okay, been a fun show. Like the show for Chris Folds, for Greg the Engineer, absent again for Magic Mike, for Bill, I'm Marty, and we'll see you last week. <laughs>